Welcome everybody, it's Katie with Embody Daily and I'm very excited today to have a special guest. Um, today I have with me Hank. Uh, many people know him in the PSM community as a prominent moderator on some uh, Sinclair Method forums in the Facebook groups. So um, I always see you post and respond to people on the groups and kind of share tips and wisdom and I just think you have so much to offer and so I'm so grateful you accepted my invitation to come on for an interview and share your TSM story and really kind of give tips and advice for others as well. So thank you, first of all, for being here with me. Well, and thank you for the opportunity and um, watching you over the years. It's been a great inspiration for me as well. So just try to keep up with Katie Lane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard to do. No, you are phenomenal. You are absolutely phenomenal. And you touch so many people's lives um, on so many extinction declarations you know beyond claudia's name your name is is quite often mentioned so you're having a tremendous influence on people's lives and uh i'm so I'll thank you for that well yeah that really means a lot and i think we're all kind of doing our part in this together like i mean i know you devote so much time to the moderation of the forums and that takes a lot of time and that support is so valuable to people so um I want to just jump right in, Hank, and really ask, you know, would you be willing to tell us a bit about your history with alcohol and what brought you to TSM? Um, as near as I can tell, um, I was exposed to rock and roll at a young age, Van Halen specifically, and they kind of had a partying lifestyle that, um, well, a young man looked up to and was like, oh, that looks like fun. <laughs> And then Animal House, I saw that movie really odd too. And that, so those were kind of my guiding influences. And what, you know, what happened in high school was, you know, weekend parties um, after the football game. And then I went to college and I, and I chose a college that was really well known for partying. <laughs> and, and, and I went there and I did a really great job of partying. And when I got out of college, you know, I was still hanging around my college buddies and we'd still go to the bars every weekend and, and get, you know, you know, party hard. And well, you know, that lifestyle, I guess, became a habit, you know? So in my thirties, I was, I mean, I was still binging, um, even though I was married and, um, and, and then in my forties, you know, the daily drinking started plus then the binging. <laughs> I was like, okay, this, this has to stop. So, or, or change. Um, and, and so I had done some uh, work early on with some of the traditional um, groups. You know, I went to a meeting and I was like, this isn't for me. And um, so anyways, fortunately, um, on one of those, you know, moments of just desperation typing in uh, the cure. <laughs> I see this TED video and I'm like, oh, great. So did my due diligence on that. And, um, you know, basically started up with TSM uh, three years ago. And um, it's so odd, I ended up, I had I've always been resistant uh, to being on Facebook. And a buddy of mine convinced me to get on Facebook so we could look at stuff for mountain biking or whatever and um, you know I, I ended up getting hooked up with a warriors group and really early on just found I guess kind of a personal niche with you know support and moderating and um, and then we started our own group I started my own, another group more for veterans a couple years ago and then more recently and was helping um, moderate some of the C3 groups as well, um, which has since scaled back uh, in the last couple of weeks, but we still have TSM breakthrough for, for veterans. So, you know, these days, you know, alcohol is, is not an important part of my life. Um, you know, it's, it's still something I use from time to time, but, um, you know, it's, when you don't have 
the uh, the cravings, the addictions, you know, and I'm sure you can attest to this, Katie, because I've, I've kind of followed your journey along the last couple of years as well. You know, you just find other things in life that tend to be way more fun, way more enjoyable, way less drama. Um, and that that becomes your new focal point. Um, so, you know, again, it, it's a healthy relationship um, with with that, you know, with that instrument, that tool or alcohol, I should say. Um, and it was not a real healthy um, place for a, a long time. Um, so grateful for Dr. Sinclair. I'm certainly grateful for Claudia um, <clears throat> really leading the way for all of us. And, and there's um, yourself and, and, and Jenny and, of course, Shane and others who have chosen to be important leaders in, in, in this journey for, for the newbies getting involved with TSM. It, I mean, there's a lot of questions. Um, how do I do it? Um, you know, what about acclimation? What about side effects? Um, what more should I be doing um, beyond just taking the pill and waiting an hour? Um, so those are things that, you know, these, these TSM Facebook groups have been really helpful. And I sure understand it's not a channel for everybody. Um, <clears throat> I think we have, it's, it's mostly a female audience. I think it's probably 70% gals, 30% guys. Um, and guys themselves generally aren't even that active as far as posting questions or comments. But um, where, where it works, I think it works really well. Um, and so as one particular medium, um, I think it's, it's a great, it's a great outlet. And, and for speaking for myself, and I, and I think Shane really feels the same way too. It's really nice to be in a position to, to give back um, because it's such a remarkable uh, solution to such a commonly uh, held problem. Um, so Super excited about TSM and where this whole thing is going um, in the years to come. I, I sincerely believe that perhaps in my lifetime, there, we probably won't see the, the problems with alcoholism that we have historically. Um, at least that's my goal. So anyways. Yeah, thank you so much for that. And just so everyone who's watching, all of these Facebook groups that Hank has mentioned are linked below the video. Um, and so there's several groups. And just for us to be aware, which one specifically are you on moderating currently? TSM Breakthrough, which was really... Um, so when we were with the, the, the real large group, um, Warriors actually, and... Um, so, you know, you always have new people coming in um, and, and, and new people ask many of the same questions that new people ask. And then in that group, you'd also have more experienced people. In some cases, they're, you know, a year or longer in, in TSM and, and still not quite at extinction. And, um, and so the idea was let's start a, a, a break off group um, gear it to veterans. Um, and so there's not going to be the newbie kinds of questions. Um, and we can focus on more advanced types of work um, to enable um, the extinction that has, at least at that point in the process, not clicked all the way through. Um, I mean, again, generally you find people fairly early on noticing subtle differences in the blackout stop, the brownout stop, you know, the embarrassing wake up in the morning, who did I text last night or who did I call last night or what did I post on my Facebook page that I'm gonna regret in the morning. Um, but, you know, sometimes again, it takes uh, a year or longer to actually reach extinction. And so we wanted a group for those kinds of people that, that they can call their own and, that we could you know, have discussions about 
when you're ready to start pushing this process forward with your lifestyle and habit changes, um, this is the platform that will help you pinpoint different strategies and give you the, the courage, help give you the courage and the support necessary to do things that may not be comfortable right away. Um, there's a lot of uh, concern about, you know, if you haven't had an AF day or alcohol free day for years, that's a, that's a big decision. Um, I'm like, how, how am I going to feel? Am I going to go through withdrawals? Most people don't. Some people do, um, but most people don't. And it's, it's mostly, you know, it, it, something you just kind of walk, have to walk through mentally and, and kind of prepare yourself for. But I've said it before. I mean, getting that first alcohol-free day out of the way is easy, harder, really, than getting the first alcohol-free week out of the way and um, getting the first alcohol-free month out of the way. You just got to start with the first one. And really what I'd like people to see is they get a few of these in a row, get the now washed out, um, which normally takes a, a couple, two, three days, and, and then hopefully enjoy some really powerful endorphin boosting activities. Go for a run. Uh, in, go to a concert, um, go have a great dinner, uh, hang out with friends, laugh, um, in, enjoy life detoxified, if you will, for a few days of alcohol, enjoy life without the now in your system, get those really healthy endorphin boosting. And then after a while of doing that, you kind of see like, man, life's pretty good. I don't really, I mean, I'm starting to see that it's not that great to, to um, drink and, and on now. And, 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 and I'm having more fun in my life, not doing those things um, and doing these other things. And, and that's, that really sets off, I think, the, the breakaway pattern that gets people over the hump. I mean, if they've been doing now in, in TSM for you know six months, a year, even 18 months or whatever, and it's, it's not quite there for them yet. Um, the one thing that typically helps get them there uh, to extinction is just when they are um, experiencing alcohol-free days. Um, and when they are doing TSM, focusing on low SD or low standard drink, um, sessions like um we, we I, I try to like say you know if you can go with like a one sd or a two sd extinction session uh, a couple times a week and then get five alcohol free days a week um we call that the five and the two um that's an end game strategy that, that's not something that people early on can do um but to have that focal point of you know i'm gonna have five days a week off I'm going to have two extinction sessions a week. Uh, maximum is going to be two SD in each of those extinction, extinction sessions. When people can actually get to that point, I mean, basically that's a really strong signal that they are at extinction. Um, beyond that, I would just say do a 30 day AF. And if it's easy, you're probably there. And, um, and so th that's really the, the focal point of breakthrough. Is, is really getting people to realize you've got wings, fly, leave the nest. You know, you can do it. You can do it, leave the nest. If you've been doing TSM for a while now, you are stronger than you know. And you just have to be encouraged or find the self-motivation um, to take that leap of faith that, you know, you're gonna survive an AF day, and once you get one down, you're going to be able to do many, many more. And, and when you get many, many more in, then you recognize that, hey, real life is happening. And I can see contrasts here that are much brighter, much lighter, much more fun. Um, 
and, and that don't involve me having to have an extinction session. But you know, what makes that all possible, of course, is TSM. That's, that's the icebreaker. Um, and, and, and a few people, I mean, I've seen it happen you know, a handful of times or like three months, done. I mean, all of a sudden, boom, I'm, I'm done. Don't need any more help. <clears throat> See you later. And, and then, but that's kind of rare. I mean, most people, you know, kind of start out more passively with TSM. They take the pill, wait an hour, boom, have some alcohol. Um, but then after a while, they're like, you know, I kind of like to be at extinction now. And it's been six months or nine months or a year. That's when I <clears throat> really try to encourage people Look, up to this point, you've been a backseat driver in the process, being compliant, that's very important. Um, and now, because TSM has been working in your body, um, subtly reconnecting uh, healthy neural pathways, it's time for you to be get active. Um, you need to start kicking some ass here um, and, and get involved with a proactive approach around low SD extinction sessions, AF days, and, um, and, and, and structure. Um, everybody in life benefits with structure. And if you can structure you know, your week around AF days and extinction sessions that are low SD, um, you're gonna put yourself in a position to achieve extinction faster um, if you're one of those common situations where people don't go right away, it takes them a lot longer than they had hoped. The answer really becomes you get involved um, and you, you take the bull by the horn and, and you start pushing the agenda. Um, TSM has enabled that process. Um, have the courage, have the strength um, to uh, take take the initiative um, beyond the TSM by addressing lifestyle uh, habits. We are who we are because of what we do. Um, and, and so changing that pattern with AF days and low SD extinction sessions is really crucial for people who want this process done as soon as possible. So that's the, that's the focal point of breakthrough. You hit on so many important points there. I encourage people who are watching to perhaps rewind because you just touched on so many important things that are crucial to success on TSM. Um, and something I heard you talk about a lot is the alcohol-free or AF days and how important those are to really achieve extinction. So in my coaching practice, I have worked with several people recently and due to the pandemic, they're just like stuck in this habit of daily drinking. And there is perhaps some fear or reservation around kind of taking that leap that you're talking about where you've got to be proactive and start seeking this life that you really want to create for yourself. So what would you say to someone who is drinking every day for a year or more and they're in that place of like, you know, it's a pandemic right now. There's not a lot to do. I don't know what else to do. Drinking is my nightly ritual. Like how does someone begin to you know, plan for that alcohol-free day and really take that first leap? Because you said the first day is harder than the first week or the first month. So what would you say in that scenario? Like, what are some practical tips you could advise? Well, so like in particular with situations where, I mean, there, there, there may be a risk of, of having, you know, um, seizures or something that would be uh, akin to withdrawal symptoms. Um, I mean, that, that has to be approached very, very carefully and I, ideally with a medical professional um, who can provide very specific targets for how do you withdraw gradually um, to position yourself for an AF day. I have not seen very many situations in the last few years that required that degree of delicacy. Um, I mean, for the most part, people who haven't had an AF day for a long time, you know, what they're going to experience is a pretty rocky night of sleep. And um, a, an hour or an hour and a half of discomfort 
when they normally um, have that first drink. I mean, and, and that's where I would focus with, with those folks um, who are in the vast majority, okay? You know, you're gonna, you're gonna pick a day um, today and you are just gonna write it down. Today I'm going AF and I'm gonna have a sticky point roughly between six and 7.30, which is normally when I begin drinking. And so during this period of time, I'm gonna do this, this, and this activity. Now, fortunately here in North America, uh, Northern hemisphere, you know, things are starting to get a little bit nicer. And so there's more activities, more opportunities for us to get outside and, and really enjoy nature and get some healthy, you know, walks in or exercise or whatever you wanna do. But, you know, structuring your uh, AF uh, session becomes really important. Um, having planned activities um, that take you away from the norm. You know, uh, you know, one of the things that Shane's done a really great job about talking about is this whole concept of mindfulness, which I'll, I'll borrow some of this from, from him for a moment. But look, I mean, probably the worst thing that a person could do is have an extinct, extinction session the way that they've always drank. You know, if it's a matter of sitting down, you know, in front of Netflix with uh, beer or, or whatever, you know, try not to do that with extinction sessions. You know, try to be doing something that's out of the, the, the normal behavior um, and, and break up that routine. Um, but getting back to the issue of the AF, I mean, I think it's just really structure, you know, remove yourself from your house, if, if that's possible, um, enjoy some activities, you know, that get you back at home at a time when you're maybe settling in for the evening, um, getting ready for bed or what have you, and then just get to bed. Um, and, you know, you're, you're, you're going to probably have that hour, hour and a half, which is your body saying, hey, look, this is normally the time that you and I get together with a drink. And what's going on here? Um, it's so funny because, I mean, in college, when I, our weekends always started Thursday night. And, and so for the longest time, I had these phantom cravings into my 40s on Thursdays. I was like, what is going on? And I was like, oh, well, this is my habit, right? Thursday nights is when I started drinking for the weekend. And I would binge Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then be basically AF Sunday through Wednesday. Well, anyways, old habits die, um, but they need a little bit of help. So in, in, in two current circumstances, yes, this is challenging, uh, extremely challenging, um, but let's not, you know, let's approach it with, there's always gonna be a reason to not do something. And there's always gonna be a reason to do something. And, you know, Look, if you're at a point in your life where you just want this to be over, um, that's plenty of reason to um, just make it happen. Tear the damn Band-Aid off. You can do it, you know, um, and, you know, go on a Facebook group and tell people your plan. Accountability is huge. We have every Sunday, we, we, we typically do an AF group day, and, and sometimes we'll get 20 people, sometimes we get 14 people. But almost every Sunday, somebody will sign up for something. Maybe it's not AF. Maybe they're just signing up for QSD um, or May. Um, May is an internet slang term, which basically says, you know, hey, I'll stop when I feel like stopping or when I no longer want more. So like ice cream cones. The first one generally is awesome. Second one, it's still pretty good. By third one, not so good anymore. You know, so if you appreciate that analogy with, with alcohol, kind of the same thing, really looking forward to that first one, second one's going down pretty good, but sometimes by three, you're like, yeah, so may I'm done. You know, I can keep going. Habit says, keep going, man. You got, you got two hours. <laughs> and, uh, but may says, and this is part of being mindful. It's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I don't need any more. Um, Go brush your teeth, grab some water, rehydrate, and you know maybe get to bed or whatever. But so, if you can't really take the leap 
today for an AF day, um, then, you know, first base is May, you know, just say like, no, well, normally I, I would drink six beers on a Friday night, for example, I look at my chart and see how much I've consumed on average over the last four weeks and say, you know what, I'm going to, this coming week, I'm going to cut that by 20%. I can cut it by 20%, no big deal. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll delay my start times by half an hour or cut it off a half an hour earlier or um, time each SD uh, with my phone. So I know that you know, I have to wait a half an hour in between each beer uh, or whatever. And, um, but then have a focal point of ending at four. Um, and then in, in a week or two, the focal point is ending at three. And then, then your focal point's ending at two. And, and then that would be the point where you are, you've gone now from May to specific targets for consumption. Now you're at a point where like your body's next move is I can do AF um, or I should do an AF. And look, maybe it doesn't work out the first couple of times. So you fall back into, well, I'll pop a pill, wait for an hour and, and go back and do a May session or a 2SD. Um, so you always, just knowing you could do that relieves so much stress. But also if you just get past that hour and a half witching hour where the cravings are gonna be the most intense, what I think is really insightful is just once you get past that, you're like, oh, this isn't so hard after all, you know? And especially again, if you've structured your time so that, you know, maybe you're away from your normal routine, um, you know, again, maybe taking a walk around the lake or what have you, enjoying uh, something that's different than what you normally do. Those are some of the pathways that people will go through and, and, um, and get that, really important coveted AF day. And then again, once you can get one, um, then, you know, the dam is broken. And really what I try to focus on is try to get two or three in a row. So then you get the nail washed out and then you can get the endorphin boost that comes from the rebounding that uh, Dr. Sinclair talked about in the book. Um, and, and, and again, even trying to plan activities, um, that are specially going to help uh, foister that endorphin boost, um, physical exercise, you know, hobbies, whatever, music, so many different opportunities, obviously. But again, you, you wanna get to that contrast where you can see life is really, can be really spectacular. Um, and and you, don't, you don't need that other thing to enhance it any longer. And, and again, TSM has done all that groundwork in your body. Um, and if it hasn't clicked to extinction on its own, that's an invitation for you to address your fears. Fear is just your body and your mind alerting you to an opportunity. That's it. Fear is an opportunity to take it one more step and that one more step is really going to give you that breakthrough to get this process done and get on with your life. Um, there's just so much opportunity out there. Um, once you get this done, it's just all, you're always going to have this in your back pocket. It's like, I had this issue. I don't have this issue any longer. I can do anything um, without, this on my, without this monkey on my back. I can do anything. And that's a real powerful place to be. I've seen in your own life, Katie, I've observed, you know, just how your relationships have changed with, um, you know, with God, for example. Um, and my, when, I, when I see people go through extinction or getting close to that point, I, I always think, like, what will become of their life because of this really huge outcome? How would their relationships change? How would their health change? What will they become that wouldn't have happened without extinction? Maybe career goals, maybe family goals. Um, you know, again, it, it, it's life can be so rich um, in so many different ways when we're not consumed by this overwhelming um, drug being in our system all the time. So, you know what? 
just do it is is really good advice with AF days, but just do it with structure is is really um, I think the main point. The more structure, the better it the more likely it'll go off as planned early on in the process with, with fewer with fewer misses, fewer experimentations. But it's okay to fail with TSM. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's it look, as long as you're compliant, you won. You know, we so many times deal with people who had a had a bad night, but it always comes back to look, you had a bad night. That's AUD. You know, that's not on you. Were you compliant? Great. Yes. So that's an extinction session. Some are more memorable than others. Guess what? It's probably the last time it's going to happen or one of the last times it's going to happen because you're going to keep getting better and better and better. So that's the beautiful thing about TSM. I think I know, I hope you know how inspiring you are. Like I am just soaking up everything you are saying because you have such a unique perspective and way to kind of communicate these points that are so important. So thank you for that. And um, I think what you've really talked about too is just something that I view as like crucial to TSM is yes, of course you wanna take the medication and be compliant, but there's this other half of it where you have to kind of, as you're saying, structure and build this life outside of TSM and outside of drinking, because if you're not doing those things simultaneously, it can be really easy to just compliantly drink on TSM every day and not really do much else. So I appreciate you speaking to that importance. And yes, it is scary for people, especially if alcohol has been their nightly ritual for years or decades to think, you know, I remember in my life, I was day drinking on Saturdays every Saturday. And when I was on TSM after a few months, there was a Saturday when I was sober during the day. And I like went out to thrift stores and shopping. And I literally was like, this feels really weird. Like I didn't know what to do with it because it was so foreign to me just to be sober on a Saturday afternoon and so those things happen and the points you're talking about is like the more you experience and see yourself live life without alcohol that veil that alcohol is kind of placed over you starts to lift and you see there's a whole life and a whole world out there and I've just kind of been living in this little box so you speak to that perfectly and I want to thank you for that thank you yeah. yes so you know it, there's so, so much more we could say about it, but, um, you know, you had asked like extinction, you know, I, we, that's one of the questions that comes up. It's like, how do I know? And look, it, it, it's just one of those things where you, you, you kind of know when you know, right. Um, and, and to be more specifically, um, like if you do an, a 30 day AF and it's like easy peasy, right that's a really good sign that you no longer have a problem with control. And if you can consistently stop at one or two SD and, and get five or six AF days in a week, you, you don't have a control problem any longer. That's extinction. And, and, and so, I mean, I, I truly believe um, that there are, there's like a white belt level of extinction which is that basic level of control. Um, I don't have to have it. I might enjoy it more often than not, but when I do, I'm in control. Um, and then there's like black belt, which I think is kind of where you personally got to after a few years of extinction, just deciding I don't need it at all. There's no more benefits involved in having an extinction session and because because life is just so awesome, I, I don't even need that. Um, and, 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 and so my observation um, is just simply that, you know, even people who get, get to extinction, they probably should continue on having extinction sessions. Maybe it's once or twice a month for, for the next few years, to, just to get to that point where it's as deeply ingrained as it can possibly be. And, and my sense is that stops after three years. Three years from the point of declaring extinction. I think you can still deepen and further that process of TSM for three years after your declaration of extinction. And that's that white belt to black belt phenomena. And, and I think the main difference there is white belt, I mean, you might think about alcohol, but it's easily dismissed. In black belt, you're like, 
I, I think of it at all, none. I mean, it's just like, I, I have zero interest in thinking about it and zero interest in drinking it. And, um, and my lifestyle reflects zero interest in it. Um, so that's, I mean, I would again, benchmark it, AF days, go 30 if it's easy. That's a really strong sign you're there. Uh, if you can do five and two, constantly or consistently over three, four months and always be able to, you know, nail ending at one SD or two SD on your extinction sessions, you're probably there. Um, and, and you can ask yourself other questions too, you know, am I obsessing about alcohol? You know, especially when I'm stressed out, am I thinking about, God, I can't wait to get home and have a drink because this has been a terrible day. I mean, if those thoughts no longer are entering in your mind um, or situations, in the past that have been like huge party situations, like I'm going to a rock concert, I'm gonna get drunk with my friends. You know, if, if that's like completely foreign from your thought process, but it was very present early on in your, in your um, TSM experience, that just tells you, yeah, you've really transformed. Um, and that's another, you know, sign of extinction. So what do you think about that three-year theory? I find that, I mean, really interesting because I, I did talk with Dr. Roy Escoffa a couple of weeks ago for an interview and he did mention, you know, kind of continuing on with those extinction sessions really to set it in. Um, for me, I don't, I would say the longer I make, you know, I achieved extinction, what, like two and a half years ago now and the longer I'm removed from that and not drinking, the less and less alcohol becomes important. So I, I think time is powerful and yeah, there's something to that. Um, the last few times I drank, I, I was drinking once a month and I was disgusted by it. And I think it did kind of what you were talking about for me because um, it just brought me nothing. In fact, it brought me down because alcohol is a depressant and I just felt that. And the next day I was like kind of tired and mildly hungover. And I was just like, this is doing nothing for me anymore. But I had also, like you've talked about, like I went out and was creating a new life that was didn't need alcohol and wasn't built based on being someone who was consuming a ton of alcohol every day. So it was a different per perspective and person. So like in your, your example earlier, like maybe you, you went out with some friends on a Friday night and then on Saturday you woke up, you're like, I don't feel normally like I normally would feel, but you try to do activities like go to thrift shops or whatever, enjoy a Saturday. And you're like, man, I don't feel that great. So what I'm doing which I would normally enjoy, I'm not enjoying that much because I don't, I just don't feel that good. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's not that you overdid it. It's just like, you know, with TSM, you, you kind of quickly realize how toxic a, dr a single drink is. Yeah. I mean, a single drink, how it impacts your sleep, how you feel different the next morning. Um, if you, if you go do an early morning workout, you know, it takes some of the edge off of your workout. You're not going to be able to work as hard. Um, and, and yeah, if it's just a single drink by, you know, probably late morning or even early afternoon, you're, you're kind of back to your normal self. But, you know, if, if it's more than just one or two, then that, that whole day, next day is, it's not ruined. It's not like a terrible hangover. You've just lost, I think, uh, an element of something that, with with extinction is much more common than without extinction which is joy it's a lot easier to find joy when you're not um when you're not detoxing um and and so again with your experience of you know i did it, it wasn't even that fun when i was doing it i got nothing out of it maybe it pissed me off a little bit um, and the next day it kind of took, it stole my joy, um, which really pissed me off. Um, then again, those are the kinds of contrasts that people see in their life. And they're like, it want, it, it causes them to want to do even more, more of the getting of the joy, less of the things that steals my joy. And it's those first alcohol free days that really begin that process of, of finding joy. Um, 
that I think that's super crucial in this process is to get to those distinctions. And, and, and TSM has made it possible. It has made the impossible possible. Um, that was the first few months or the first six months of laying the groundwork in your brain for you then to get out of the passenger seat and start driving this Ferrari. Um, and, and the direction you wanna take it is AF days and low SD extinction sessions and whatever ratio that you feel like you can handle. Um, I, I always tell people, look, you don't want to white knuckle it all day, but if you white knuckle it for six, seven hours, that's good. I mean, you have to be uncomfortable, uh, not terribly uncomfortable, but somewhat uncomfortable when you are, are we're, you're going to address this AF day business or low SD, you know, again, you, you're going to, you're, the part of you is going to have to fight for this. Um, and it's worth it. It's worth it because you're going to get more joy in your life when you no longer have this, this issue to deal with. And that's, that's crucially important. I'm so glad you brought up joy because that was something that I got perspective on once I achieved extinction. I realized I haven't really felt joy for the past 10 years of my life. Sure, I would be happy and have fun and all that, but that deep joy that is just like grateful to be alive for no other reason than just to be alive, it's that alcohol robbed me of that for sure. And I love your car analogy because it just made me think like living life kind of in the trap of alcohol use disorder. It's like driving, you know, an old beat up Honda that hardly runs. And then when you see the glimpse of what life is without that problem. It is like driving a Ferrari or some other amazing car. It's just a different, a different way to live. And I think we don't know how good we're going to feel until we start to experience that. Like, I didn't know how ill I felt every day until I started to have alcohol free days. And I was like, oh yeah, this is great. You know? And so again, speaking to your point of the importance of getting those AF days. And it's just like, that's how we can start to trust a life and ourself without alcohol or with less alcohol, because we see how sweet it is and how amazing it is. And alcohol takes that from you, it really does. You know, and beyond that too, you, you know, sometimes we just had this um, recently at Breakthrough where uh, one of the gals had posted uh, a before and after 30 day. And I mean, it was just like totally skin, much more, um, you know, not splotchy, beautiful. I mean, this is like just 30 days um, was just a great transformation in, in not only how she felt, but in how she looked. It was, I mean, that would be another thing too, um, you know, for people to think about. It's just like, you know, do when you do your 30 day, you know, take a before and after picture and and you will be amazed at how, how different you feel, how different you look when you don't have that poison in your body for 30 days. I mean, even, even if you have three, four drinks, I think it, it it's, it's going to be three, four days before you have really gotten all the toxins out of your body. Um, it's not to say you're going to be feeling bad or anything like that, but I mean, to really feel good and really sleep good. Sometimes it takes a few days even after you've had just a few. Um, so, you know, TSM allows you to kind of see that it's not candy, it's candy covered poison I'm consuming. And it has a real impact on every aspect of my life. And the nice thing about getting rid of the cravings is that then you have the opportunity to seize other things in your life, which can be um, you know, like you said, more joyful. So I, I can't say thing. enough about TSM. I mean, I, I, you, you know, you, when those periods in my life came up where like, okay, I'm going to stop for a while and take a break, or I'm going to reorganize my life. And, you know, you've gone a few days now without having a beer. And, and then you see like a, a Bud Light commercial and you're like, you like throwing bricks at the TV. Like, how dare you put a Bud Light commercial on? I can't drink right now. Or you go walk by the liquor store, the grocery store, and you're like, damn it, I can't stop for, <laughs> I can't stop for a drink, you know? And, 
And then when you hit extension, it's like, that's really kind of a funny Bud Light commercial, but I have no interest in, <laughs> or it's a really dumb commercial and I have no interest and I can go past the liquor store and I have no interest, you know, it's, it's really, really freeing. And so people like, you know, who go the abstinent route, I mean, can you imagine how exhausting that would be? You know, you're spending large parts of your life fighting something that feels so natural, which is to satisfy a craving. And, um, you know, so people who are looking for the contrast between TSM, you know, which is extinction driven, you know, which is, I, I rewire my brain to before was addicted uh, to abstinence driven, which is I'm trying to fight, which comes natural to me. Um, it's a real no, it, it's a really easy decision, quite frankly, I, I think. Um, if people really can, understand the, 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 the differences between uh, abstaining and fighting cravings versus not having cravings. Um, it's a real, real beautiful gift. Um, and definitely it's, it's something that I know you believe in it and I believe in it and Claudia and, and Shane and others really just want to share the good news. You know, look, there's a whole world out there once you finish dealing with a situation in a very uh, uh, cool scientific approach, um, then you can get on with your life and whatever um, you want to do in your life is going to be a lot easier to get done because you no longer have this monkey on your back. And, and that's really, really cool. Yeah, it is so freeing. So I guess just to kind of start to wrap up here, you know, are there... Um, well, first I want to hear, because you obviously have so much experience and wisdom and great advice to offer people. So can you quickly tell us, you know, were there challenges you experienced on your TSM journey that you see pop up for others, like some common challenges you see within the community? Well, I mean, the, the big one, of course, is, you know, non-compliant uh, behaviors. And, um, you know, look, it... it I think you just, you reflect back on, on what brought you to the keyboard to type in these words into a search engine, um, is the cure for alcoholism, you know, how much pain were you going through at that time and, and, and what you felt when you saw Claudia, you know, give her a TED talk or however you were introduced to TSM, like, oh my gosh, there's really a scientific cure for this mess that doesn't involve me having to fight cravings my whole life. How cool is that? Um, you know, it, it is one of those, one of those things where, you know, people have to make a choice, you know, do they want to try to chase something that is leading them down a bad path or do they want to drink compliantly? And, um, you know, I, I it, it, I'm sure that struggle happens more often than we even know on, on Facebook groups. Um, occasionally people will say, I got a confession, you know, and, and that's a real cathartic, cathartic deal when that happens. I think it's really healthy when people are like, I want to be accountable to the group. I, you know, I made a mistake. I learned my lesson and we're all like, great, let's move on. <laughs> um, and so that, that's, the, that's the major issue. Um, and then the secondary issue is um, something that we alluded to earlier, which is, you know, with TSM, you're stronger than you think you are, you're capable of more than you believe, um, and it's my job to help you understand that you're capable of doing an AF day. You want to do an AF day, even if you don't think you do, and when you do one, you're just going to be like, okay, I did it. That's amazing. It's a huge breakthrough. And that can allow a lot of other really important breakthroughs to happen um, right after that. That's like the big, big, big one when people are like, I want to drive this car finally. Um, and I want to take a bigger, uh, bigger role in my, um, in this solution than what I was maybe willing to do early on, uh, which is a lot. I mean, taking the pill, waiting an hour, uh, foregoing the endorphin hit. Um, those are all big things. Um, but again, at a certain point, people are like, I would just want to be done with this now. 
Um, and, and that's the thing that we want to try to strive for is when you're there, okay, now you have a pathway to actually be done. Yeah, that's really well said. So my last question, um, just what would you, what advice do you have for people out there who are on TSM or who are learning about it, you know, maybe for the first time or just doing that preliminary research? What do you have to share to those people? Well, I mean, I, I took in as, as much content as I could. Um, I mean, I, I really read each word carefully in, in Roy Escapa's book. Um, you know, I reviewed a lot of the videos on, on YouTube. Um, you know, Claudia's got some um, stuff out there and, 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 and you've got a lot of amazing content out there. It's just, you know, when you, when you understand the science, which is the, the book, right? And then you see the real life differences um, in, in those, different, those different videos. It just gives you a lot of confidence that, okay, this, is, this could actually work for me. And then if, if you're in tuned with, with Facebook or, or some other um, social media platform where a TSM group is, that can also be really, really helpful, uh, again, for certain types of people who want that interaction. I mean, we, we know a part of you better than your spouse does if your spouse doesn't have AUD, right? Um, because people who have AUD know each other like the back of their hand, right? We know all the behaviors, we know all the feelings, the shame, the guilt, all that stuff we get. If, you, if you're married and your spouse doesn't have AUD, they don't fully understand you the way that we do. Um, and, and, that's, and that's okay. We're, we're, help, we're gonna help you and you're gonna help yourself and we're gonna help each other through support and guidance. And sometimes it's like, you know, again, just a little bit of encouragement is all people need to leave the nest and get that AF day in that really begins to change the entire process for them. So. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I want to thank you so much for your time today. It's been really wonderful to chat with you. You've given us so much. So thank you, Hank, for taking time. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, keep up the great work, Katie. You're amazing. And you've chosen these um, different ways to reach out to people. And I think it's just awesome. Like I said, there's so many people when they reach extinction, you're one of the names that comes up. Thank you, Katie, for what you've done. Um, is what I hear, what I read. And so um, let me say that. Thank you, Katie, for what you've done, because it's amazing. Oh, well, thank you. That really means more than you know, and, and same to you. And so, um, yeah, we're all kind of forging this path together, I think, to raise awareness about TSM. And so for anyone who's been on the method for a while and isn't a member of the TSM breakthrough group, it's for people who are kind of, as Hank shared, like they ready to take it to the next level and reach extinction. So join the group. I'll link it below. And yeah, thanks again, Hank. Take care. Have a good weekend. Bye.